Ooh, is that the peak of Mount Denali? Did we actually get to see a top of Mount Denali? Ooh, I don't know. I'm not so sure that's the peak. Denali National Park is a wonderful park in Alaska, but before you go, here are the things that you need to know. The top 10 things you need to know about in Denali National Park. Number one, Denali is big. It's huge. It's got 6 million acres of a park in this national park, but it's only one road, and the road goes almost 90 miles into the interior but you cannot drive the 90 miles. You have to take a park shuttle. And once you get on the park shuttle, you know exactly why, because the roads are not paved and it's kind of treacherous if you're not experienced. Number two, one of the key questions as we're planning for this trip is whether or not to take the narrated bus tour, which is uh, kind of expensive. I think we paid around $130 a person for that, or the park shuttle which is a lot cheaper at, I don't know, 20 or $30 a person. Well, the difference is all in you. What do you like and what do you prefer? The narrated bus tour would take you out on, uh, depending on the, uh, on the uh, trip that you book, anywhere from four to eight hours out into the park. There is a guide that's also the bus driver that will narrate the tour for you. They will stop for wildlife and they will explain to you the different history and so on and so forth. It is an all-day guided tour. They provide some snacks for you and they have bathroom breaks. The park shuttle, on the other hand, is really meant for transportation. Now, there are uh, bus drivers for the shuttle that will narrate, that will talk about things, and they will stop for wildlife. But essentially, it's a shuttle system that takes you from the visitor center and it will go all the way. Well, actually, there's two or three routes, depending on how far you go into the park. And it will stop at certain places to drop you off if you want to go hiking. And once you're done, you come back to the road and you basically wave down the next shuttle that comes through and they will pick you up. Of course, there's always a chance that by the time you want to get picked up, the shuttle is full and you have to wait for the next one. Um, but essentially, it is a transportation system. The shuttles generally run about every half hour, so it's not that frequent. You may have to uh, sit there and wait and just sit back and enjoy the scenery, which is not halfway bad. The park road will take you 15 miles to Savage River. That's about as far as you can drive in a private car. Beyond that, it is gravel road that can only be uh, accessed by the park shuttle bus. Almost all of the hiking trails that are marked trails are in either the visitor center area or the Savage River area where you can drive to. Beyond that, there are almost no uh, marked trails. Uh, they do allow any kind of backcountry hiking that you want, but you better know what you're doing. You better know how to guide yourself and you better be prepared because out here things can change very quickly, even in the summertime. If you're not going backcountry hiking, and like us, if you're not comfortable to go off of the trails, uh, there's really no need to uh, do any kind of uh, venturing beyond Savage River except for the narrated tour where you see wildlife. You stay on the bus, you see the wildlife, they make a few stops along the way for you to take pictures and stuff, um, but uh, that is the way to go if you are not going backcountry hiking. The park shuttle bus, the last bus leaves at 6.30. Now you might think, well, 6.30, you know, it's kind of the end of the day, you know, most people who are hiking will be returning by then, but be careful out here in the summertime. We're here in late May, and we almost didn't see any darkness. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, and it was still dusk kind of lighting outside. So the time can really fool you. You'll be walking around, enjoying the great scenery that is out here, and uh, the sun would still be very high in the sky. You think, ah, oh, it's probably three or four o'clock in the afternoon, but it could very, very easily be seven o'clock. And if you miss your last bus out here, I think you're in trouble. So better set the alarm or set something to remind you to uh, make sure you get out of here on the shuttle bus before the last bus. Number three, really enjoy the scenery that's out here. You just look at this vista right behind me here. 
it's got uh, these um, avalanche chutes that kind of dotted the hillside we're here in uh, late may and not, not all the snow are melted and uh, you see this field here in july this field will be fully green with berries in august and uh it's so the, the season is very uh, variable and changeable depending on what time of the year that you hear and uh, it would de uh, depend on what you see i really like the zebra like um, pattern that's out in the mountainside right now and uh it's kind of a really fun place just to look around with the tall mountains and the peaks is just beautiful out here Mount McKinley at over 20,000 feet is notoriously hard to see because because of its height it creates its own weather so maybe a quarter at most of the visitors actually see the peak of uh, uh, Mount Denali and especially in the summertime it is very hard to see number four the wildlife here is amazing we've seen grizzly bears we've seen caribous we've seen moose We've seen uh, little ground uh, alpine uh, arctic squirrels. We've seen all kinds of birds out here. Uh, and uh, we've seen, um, in a very far distance for us, uh, the doll sheep, which is uh, the namesake almost of this uh, national park, the reason that it was established in the first place. We saw snowshoe hare, which changes color. In the wintertime, it's completely white. In the summertime, it is brown. To in order to blend in with the background, amazing. And we also saw pure porcupines are running around. Although running is sort of a, you know, a, given it generously, they don't really run, they kind of waddle. There are plenty of wildlife out here, but your mileage may vary. All depends on how lucky you are, it depends on the time of day, times of year, and all that stuff. So while there's life, lots of wildlife out here, it is not a guarantee. Some people see a doll sheep and a bear right next to their bus, and some people only see it in the distance, and some people don't see it at all. On our tour in late May, we were able to see a lot of grizzlies with their cubs, and we saw um, a lot of uh, caribou, and we saw um, a lot of uh, some moose and uh, snowshoe uh, hare. Um, but we did not see a bear like right next to our bus, for example. So things were maybe half a mile away, when you go on the bus tours, make sure you bring binoculars and if you like photography, make sure you bring a telephoto lens because that's going to be really needed in order to see the wildlife clearly. Be respectful of wildlife. If you see a bear, keep your distance. If you're going to go backcountry hiking, you really should have bear spray because these grizzlies are huge. You know, people say, oh, well, you know, the grizzlies are big and the, the black bears are smaller, right? And as somebody joked once, the only difference between grizzly and a black bear is that the grizzly will kill you in two seconds and the black, bear, the black bear will take you three seconds in order to kill you. So just be careful out here. There are actually more people that have died from moose attack than there are from bear attack. Moose is very territorial and uh, they will charge you to, uh, not to eat you, but they will charge you to uh, get you off and if they kind of poke you in the wrong place, you can get thrown and get killed. Number five, there is a dog kennel here on site. It is the only one in the national park system and uh, you could come, you can pet the dogs, you can uh, come to a show that happens two or three times a day where they explain to you about the Alaskan Huskies, how they got here, how they breed them, how they use them. And uh, the park service uh, shows the dogs off during the summertime. It's sort of the dog's vacation season. Uh, in the wintertime, they use the dogs to haul freight, really, into the interior parts of the park. A lot of this park is considered wilderness area, and one of the result of having wilderness area designated is that you cannot have any kind of motorized vehicles inside that area. So in order to get uh, things uh, to certain places inside the park, you, you do that in the winter time with the sled dogs, the Alaskan Husky sled dogs, and you literally haul freight into designated places where the, the rangers and other people come in the, during the summertime to do construction. For example, there's a suspension bridge way into the interior in one of the, uh, one of the uh, hiking places where uh, they literally built a bridge with all the material that was hauled in from 
um, in the, during the winter time with the, uh, with the sled dogs. I asked the rangers, so, you know, what happens if you have to haul some stuff in during the summertime? I said, well, the only way to get it in there is on the backs of people. Can you imagine hauling freight on, on your backs? What? That's got to be a lot of work. Number six. You can certainly drive to Denali, but uh, in this park, you can also get here without driving. And it's actually pretty convenient. You can come here by motor coach from uh, Anchorage or from Fairbanks. You can come here by the Alaskan Railroad, which runs from Anchorage to Fairbanks, but stops here at Denali. This is actually how some of the very early visitors got here in the first place. Uh, you can certainly drive here. Once you get here, all the services around here are taking that into account. There's uh, bus shuttles from hotels into the restaurant area. There's bus shuttles coming into the park. And within the park, you can take a, bus, a park shuttle to go just about anywhere that's accessible by road out here. So it is very convenient to come out here uh, and, um, and just without a car and be able to see almost everything that you could see with a car. No big difference. Number seven, you have to plan ahead. That is key, plan ahead. If you don't plan ahead, you may not find lodging, you may not find the activities that you want. You've got to plan many, many months ahead to come here. The season in Denali is short. It basically goes from May until September. And uh, if you don't plan ahead, you just may not find any place to stay. When you come, be prepared for changeable weather. During the day today, we've had weather when it's sunny outside and no wind, and uh, I can just easily walk around with my sweatshirt on. And there are other times, like right now, the wind is kind of blowing a little bit, and with the shade, I have to keep my uh, jacket on. And earlier, when we took a walk uh, at the Savage River Loop, it was windy, and it was cloudy, and it was cold, and I had to put my wet ski jacket on. This is all in the space of three hours. So be prepared out here, dress in layers, so that you can easily remove and put on. Don't underestimate the changeable weather. It can go from balmy to freezing cold in an hour or two. So be prepared. Number eight, when, do, when should you visit Denali National Park? Well, for most of us who are not that hardy, May through September is the season out here. Uh, the town starts to wake up in uh, late April, early May, and uh, the tour starts to come in, you know, roughly in the May time frame. It gets really peak season in July and August. Um, but uh, the shoulder seasons like May and September are really great times to come and visit. We pick May for a couple of reasons. One is it's, you know, less crowded. Things are just getting started. It is warm enough to do what we need to do. And uh, the last couple of days we've been here, we've been very lucky. The weather, the temperature has been in the mid fifties. The other reason that we picked May is because this is before the bugs show up. Now we're here in late May. The weather is cold, you know, relatively cold. The evening temperature gets down below freezing, but we are seeing these huge mosquitoes that are already flying around. They're kind of waking up from their winter nap and they're kind of slow right now. But the rangers have told me that as the season goes along, the next generation and the next generation gets faster and faster and they get hungrier and hungrier. So if you, if you don't like bugs, don't come here in July and August because I'm hearing that there's lots of bugs out here. Uh, May is a good time because it's before the bug season really gets started. We planned two days in Denali, and for most people, that's probably enough. We took the narrated tour on the first day. We actually booked the shuttle on the second day, thinking that we would explore the first day, figure out where you know is interesting, we go back next, and uh, we take the shuttle back to that spot and maybe go explore around that and maybe go do a little hiking. What we found out during the first day you know, is that um, there are really no hiking trails out there, so we basically skipped the shuttle bus for the second day. Uh, and didn't really utilize it at all on the second day. So really shouldn't do both unless, unless you want to do the wildlife excursion twice. On the second day, instead of using the bus shuttle, we uh, decided to drive to uh, Savage River and had a wonderful hike in the Savage er uh, River area. That was just some beautiful scenery.
number nine. We are not backcountry uh, hikers and uh, we don't like tents. So we like to stay in hotels, uh, have the luxuries of life while we're exploring the wilderness here. And uh, keep in mind that the hotels here are kind of primitive. They're kind of expensive, like all things in Alaska are, but especially here because the season is so short. Don't expect luxury accommodations here. The, the stays here are rustic, they're adequate, but you know, they're not uh, your suburban or urban uh, nice hotels, even though you're gonna be paying the kind of prices that uh, you typically find in a uh, more crowded place. The town of McKinley Park, which is just outside of the park boundary, it's only about a mile from the road that gets into the park. It has a ton of uh, restaurants, it has a ton of hotels to cater to the tourists that's out here. Everybody that we met out here has been really friendly. A lot of them are seasonal workers that come here in the summertime. Many of them are free spirits. I guess you really have to be a free spirit in order to come all the way north here for a temporary summer job. And uh, we've had a lot of fun just talking to the different people that, that come here to work, that come here to play. And all of them are obviously outdoor enthusiasts. During the summertime, they go for midnight hikes. You know, midnight hikes? In the, the moon? No, 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 no moon. Midnight is bright. You can hike probably 22 hours a day out here in the summertime and uh, not have a problem. So the town of McKinley Park is a good gateway community for the park. You can find all, all, your, all the services that you need at McKinley Park. Number 10. I think due to the nature of this park, Almost everybody we see out here are what I call national park people. They're wearing hiking boots, they look like they're well prepared, and uh, they always say hello as you pass them on the trails. This is very different than some of the other more famous national parks where you see the national parks people, but you also see what I call the theme park people. Who are the theme park people? These are people that come to go hiking in flip-flops, there are people who come hiking in sundresses. There are people who are ill-prepared. And there are people who are basically more rude than what I call the National Park people. The people out here in Denali are nature lovers. You can tell and they basically love this place. Well, there you have it. The top 10 things that you need to know when visiting Denali National Park. But most important, come. Come and enjoy this wonderful wilderness and the beautiful scenery that is here. We are on our way to visit all the national parks in the United States. Check out my blog in the description box below. Subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up if you like it.